Hi everyone, I am Benedict Adewale, one of the laboratory instructors for Chemistry 103. I'll be presenting the Prelab for Experiment 8, Spectrophotometric Analysis of Ion in Green Crystal. In Experiment 6, you synthesize potassium trioxalato ferritri trihydrate. In this experiment, you are going to determine the percent of ion using the calibration curve. Other objective of this lab is to understand Pierce's law, which says that the amount of light absorbed by a sample is proportional to the concentration of the absorbing sample. In addition, you, could, you are going to prepare a series of standard of known concentration of ion. Measure the absorbance of light for each sample, then prepare a calibration curve for the standard showing absorbance versus the concentration of ion. Ultimately, you are going to use the calibration curve to determine the, the percent of ion in potassium trioxalato trihydride. Then compare your experimental result to the theoretical percent ion in potassium trioxalato trihydride. First, we'll, um, I will introduce you, you, you guys to a spectrophotometer. Spectroscopy is the study of electromagnetic radiation emitted or absorbed by a given chemical species. The instrument that uses spectroscopy is called a spectrophotometer. A spectrophotometer is an instrument that measures the amount of light absorbed by a substance. A spectrophotometer has five main components. The light source, a, mono, a monochromator, a sample solution, a detector, a display, a, a digital display or meter. Now, I will now explain each of the components. A light source is capable of providing a range of wavelengths. A monochromator, selects a particular wavelength of light and delivers this to the sample cell with an original intensity of IO. The sample cell or the sample solution contains the solution in a covert or a test tube, which is being analyzed. A, a detector it measures the intensity of the transmitted light from the sample. And a digital display or meter displays the transmitted intensity. In order to use a photometer, you have to be um, familiar with some terms. The percent transmittance is defined as the amount of light that passes through a sample. Percent transmittance equals to the intensity of light that passes through the sample divided by the intensity of incident light times 100. And absorbance A is defined as the amount of light that is absorbed by the sample. A equals log of I naught divided by I. It is important to note that if there is no absorption of light by a sample, then the percent transmitted is 100% and the absorbance is zero. If the sample absorbs all the light, then percent transmitted is zero and ab absorbance is in infinity. In order to know about the absorbance, we know that the ab 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 absorbance is related to the concentration and it can be expressed by the pierre Lampard law. The pierre Lampard law says A, the absorbance equals to the molar absorptivity times the path length times the concentration, meaning capital letter A equals to A times B times C. We should know that the absorbance have no unit, then A small letter A is the molar absorptivity, B is the path length, C is the sample concentration. When the PS law is obeyed, there is a linear relationship between the absorbance and the concentration as shown below. So we have the absorbance on the y-axis and the concentration on the x-axis. 
as you can see, looking at the equation of um, A equals to A, B, C, capital letter A ab absorbance is also the Y axis and the concentration is the X axis. So absorptivity will be our slope. B is the part length, which is equals to one centimeter. For the experimental procedure, it is divided into two parts. Part A is the preparation of calibration curve. In this part, you are going to be working with a partner. Part B is the determination of iron in potassium tri or zalatoferrate. In part A, preparation of the calibration curve, you are going to prepare the standard curve using five solutions of known concentration of iron. You will get the colored solution of increasing intensity through two reactions. In this experiment, you are going to convert. So, in this experiment, you will analyze for the iron content. The analysis will be carried out first by converting the ion three in the sample to ion two using hydroxyl amine. Then you are going to react the ion two produced with philantrolin to form a orange red compound, just as it is in right here. First, you deliver is 0 0.0500 milligram per ml of iron from the burette directly into five different 50 ml volumetric plaques of each of the volume of approximately one ml, two ml, three ml, four ml, five ml of the standard iron. Then you will add one ml of one molar ammonium acetate of one squat, then add one ml of 10% hydroxyl amine HCl, then add 10 ml of 0.30% auto phenantrolin, one squat. Make sure you write down your observation. You fill the volumetric flag to 50 ml with distilled water to the mark, um, to the mark and wait for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. The color should be fully developed by then. It is stable for at least an hour. So once you have prepared each of your five solutions, make sure you are able you label it properly. Build the solutions to be added to the iron standard are in dispensing bottle in the hood, set to deliver at appropriate volume. So I'm going to show you one of um, the volumetric plants. So this is plant number three. So once you fill each of them with the appropriate solution, make sure you fill it to them to half the leg and impart it gently. Then you fill to distill water to the line. Make sure you don't pass the line. So once it is filled to the desired mark, then you can now invert it. Then you have your solution prepared for you. It is important to, to note that once 
you repeat that for the remaining polymetric plaques, you wait for you you wait for it to develop for 15 to 20 minutes. During this time, begin the preparation of solution in part B of the experiment. When the standard ion solution have been allowed to sit at the proper time, rinse one of the test tube provided in the lab with distilled water. Before I show you, I want to introduce you to spectrophotometer, which is the instrument we'll be using in, in the lab. In order to set up the spectrophotometer, you need to know your analytical wavelength. And yeah, we have given the wavelength of 510 nanometer. Then you put a blank in the sample order on the left, set the absorbance to zero with the blank sample prepared for you. Then you insert the sample and record absorbance. When you are ready to use the photometer, When you're ready to use the petrol photometer, it should be in the menu. So you have the menu display right here. You can return to the menu by pressing the home button. And you have your arrow of right, left arrow, and you can press enter. You want the live display and you want your measurement mode. You can press the lower arrow key and you want your measurement in absorbance. We can also change it to percent transmitters, but we want it in absorbance. We want to measure in absorbance. Then since you have been, in order to use the spectrophotometer, you need to know your wavelength. So you have been given a wavelength of 510 nanometer. So you use the knob, you use the knob on the left hand side to set it to 510 nanometer. Once you have your wavelength 510 nanometer, then you press the lower arrow key, go, then you press enter. A blank solution is going to be provided for you for calibration. Open the sample compartment. Make sure in the sample compartment, the samples go on the left hand side. And in order to zero it, you press the middle button zero. Make sure you remove the blank sample, then you can now take the absorbance of each of your solution. So you run your series of standard and construct a calibration curve. First, make sure you calculate the concentration of ion standard then make the calibration curve in Microsoft Word Excel spreadsheet in the lab. You are going to have a table of absorbance and concentration. In the part B, which is the determination of ion in potassium triosalato ferrate. You are going to weigh out between 0 0.06 to 0 0.08 grams of potassium triosalatoferrate trihydrate, which is the green crystal you prepared in experiment six. 
we are going to measure it into a 15 ml volumetric flux. Then you had five drops of six molar sulfuric acid in the volumetric flux. Mix it well, fill it to the line with this distilled water. Then you pipette one ml of this into each of the 350 ml volumetric flux and add other reagent into part as you did in part A. Make sure you record your obs observation. For, for part B, you are going to have a similar, a similar flux like this. Once you prepare your solutions for part B, part B is your unknown, then you are going to get the ab absorbance for flux B1, B2, and B3. Then you take the average of the absorbance values. From the average absorbance absorbent values of the solution from the flux B1, P2, P3, you are going to determine the concentration of ion using the plot you prepared in part A. You should use the equation of the line generated from the plot. For the calculation portion, you know the volume of the solution in each flux of B1, P2, P3. You have to calculate the total milligrams of ion present in this solution. Remember that all the ion in the flux B1, P2, P3 came from that one ml from the flux A that you have. So you should note that when you are calculating the concentration. Ultimately, you are going to calculate the percent ion in print crystals. If you have any question, please make sure you ask your instructors. Good luck in the experiment. These are the calculation for part A. Please note that when you are plotting your graph, make sure that the origin for absorbance is zero and the concentration is zero. And this is your calculation for part B.